Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. There's one question that's uh, around in the FPV community or in the RC community in general for a long long time and that's the question what's the best RC link? There's a simple and the only real answer to that, uh, the best or ceiling is what fits your needs. As many of you might know, I am using the uh, FR Sky R9 system and I want to un answer a few questions uh, I often get asked why I actually use it. So let's first start with my general requirements to any R ceiling system. Point number one, I want an RC system that's equally usable on short range, mid range and long range crafts, no matter if it's a quad or a plane, and also usable for proximity stuff and has a good penetration. Point two is the price tag. The price tag should be okay to be not too expensive so I can equip any Plane. I'm mostly talking about planes at this point. Any plane without having too high cost, but it should also not be the cheapest crap that you can find somewhere where you have no idea how good the manufacturing quality is. It should also be a reliable and easy to set up system, so I don't want to fiddle around for hours just to get it updated, bound and set up in my craft itself. And point number four is it should have a high telemetry range. Just in case, if I fly long range or I crash somewhere further out, I want to have the telemetry as long as possible till the plane or the craft in general goes down, so I can be sure that I have the last GPS coordinates on my radio to find it later. There are multiple long range capable systems out there, but first of all, I want to explain you what my points are and why, why I use especially R9 uh, from FR Sky. I use R9 on two radios. The first one is my Radio Master TX16S with an R9 full size module and on my FR Sky X Lite Pro with the Lite module. So for me the R9 system was always reliable. I had some issues right when I started with R9 uh, with some receiver and also module issues but these were mostly hardware problems I had uh, from the used hardware I bought. But since I started to only buy new system from, the, uh, from a shop and not used hardware, everything was fine. So I don't know what the previous user has done with the equipment. I only use R9 on the access protocol today. And that's also the reason why I got the Radio Master TX16S because with a simple mod it is possible to use the access protocol on this radio. The um, X Lite Pro is capable of access from the start. One of the most important features for me especially because I use two radios, is the model share feature. My main radio is the Radio Master. And just in case I want to do some proximity stuff uh, where I need fast reaction times, I prefer the X-Lite Pro where I can use just my thumbs because with that radio I have much uh, faster reactions. And with the model share I can easily transfer my model from one radio to the other without need to rebind or without risking to have both radios on at the same time and capture the wrong model. And this also allows me to share my models with other pilots. For example, if I fly with friends, I can just bind one model to the other radio and we can fly my models at the same time. The next feature I like on the R9 system is the F-Port protocol. That's the protocol the receiver uses to communicate to the flight controller. And the reason why I like it so much is because it's only a one wire connection. That means there's only one single wire that use, uh, that is used for the telemetry data and also for the r ceiling data. This makes wiring easier, especially on some of the airplanes with a six pin ring connector where three pins are already used by the servo. I don't have to fiddle around with sharing ground with the servo because I have three pins free and that's all I need for the F port protocol to use. Range was never an issue so far. I have done range tests on 10 milliwatt with the old ACCST protocol. I went out to 10 or 11 kilometers without a fail safe. And with Axis and the Actuna Moxon antennas here, I reached 30 kilometers or 32 kilometers on a range test without even fail saving. So I am very sure that I won't reach the range limit of the R9 system very soon, uh, especially not with the crafts that I have. All of the R9 receivers have 100 milliwatt telemetry. That's what uh, I said before. I want to have a reliable and good penetration and maximum range. 
so I don't have to be worried about losing my GPS coordinates just in case my plane goes down. R9 also has 16 full resolution RC channels. Uh, for many of you it might not be reasonable to have 16 channels because you might use Crossfire or Express LRS or any other ceiling system that only has 12 or even less. Right now I have two crafts where I need more than 12 RC channels and it makes no sense to run two systems in parallel just to have one on 16 and the rest on 12 only for example. So at this point uh, this is also a good point for me why I use R9. So what are the downsides of R9 for me personally? Uh, one thing I don't like is that it doesn't support MavLink telemetry. When I want to forward telemetry from my radio to a ground station or to an antenna tracker, I have to use the tele telemetry from the radio and that's the FR Sky X telemetry, at least that's uh, how it's called on the antenna tracker. This reduces at least the capabilities of using different tracker hardware or different ground station software. Also to use the access protocol, uh, most non-FR Sky radios need a modification. If a modification is available. Beside that, only FR Sky radios after a certain generation, I think after the 2019 generation or later, uh, are capable of running R9 on Access, while other systems are more universal compatible. So yeah, of course, I am limited to, sp limited to specific radios, but with these two com uh, radios in combination, I have the perfect match for myself. So let's talk about the other R ceiling systems and why I don't use them, and also to see uh, what I miss from them. Uh, first of all, Crossfire. As I mentioned before, Crossfire only has 12 channels, so all my planes are on R9 right now, and this is one of the reasons for them. I also talked about the F port protocol before. Crossfire uses the CR CRSF protocol that needs a full URT, X, and RX. So one wire more, that's, that also makes the wiring on some of my planes at least uh, more complicated. And from my experience, I also have Crossfire and sometimes I use it for testing purposes. And from my experience, the update procedure on Crossfire is a little bit too unreliable. I followed a lot of beta updates also, but uh, I have the, the experience that sometimes uh, after the update, the receiver update could fail and I had to try it two or three times. Or sometimes uh, the binding after the update does fail, so I have to reset the receiver. I had lots of trouble in the past and that's a problem I don't really have on Access R9 because there are not that many updates. The last update on R9 I know of is more than a year old and that currently just works. Yeah, there are not coming uh, any new features right now, but uh, I also don't have the hassle of updating my whole fleet all the time just to get the newest stuff running. So what do I miss from Crossfire? There are actually two points. One of that I talked about earlier. That's the MavLink telemetry or the MavLink emulation telemetry, uh, where I can get over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi the telemetry in the MavLink format on my ground station software or on my antenna tracker. This is of course a more open standard that can be used by many more applications. Unfortunately, I cannot do that with the R9 and that would, would be nice to have. Also, Crossfire has a forced telemetry mode. Uh, in this mode, as soon as the signal quality goes too low, uh, Crossfire switches into a mode where the R ceiling signals are only sent with an update rate of 4 Hz. This is very nice for GPS assisted fly-by-wire flights. Unfortunately, R9 doesn't have this. But uh, on the other hand, um, with the constant 50 Hz mode on uh, R9, I don't know if I will ever reach the limit of that. So not sure if I will need that mode actually in the future. So the next system that can be considered as a long range system is Express LRS. Uh, we have a lot of the same issues like with Crossfire. We have the 12 channels, we have the update topic. I'm not sure about how reliable the updates on Express LRS are. But at least for Express LRS, I need a separate device to do the updates because the receivers and the modules have to be updated over Wi-Fi from a smartphone or from a PC. So if I forget uh, uh, to update any of my crafts after I updated the module, I have to have my laptop or my phone with the application, with the firmware available in the field to update it that way. Otherwise, uh, I can get into into trouble. This is much easier with Crossfire and R9 because I can just update the receivers on Connect 
uh, just from my radio without any extra intervention so I don't have to update my whole fleet at once. And yeah then there is the uh, channel resolution uh, topic on uh, Express LRS after channel 4 so channel 5 and onwards there are only limited channel resolutions. Channel 5 is only a binary switch for arming and channel 6 to channel 12 has only a low resolution that makes the use of um, head tracking a little bit more jittery. Some say they don't have a problem with that. I don't like it so that's also a point for me not to use Express LIS. One thing from Express LIS is actually pretty cool and that's the 2.4 GHz micro receivers, these very small ones with the onboard ceramic antennas. This is something I really like because it makes sense to have them in smaller crafts or in, in airplanes or, or quads with uh, or that are only meant to use for proximity. I wish that would be available from other manufacturers as well. And the last system I want to talk about is Dragonlink, but it, actually uh, this is a pretty short talk. Uh, just when I look at the prices, um, that's an absolutely no-go no from my perspective at least. Uh, one receiver costs about $100 and uh, just to get one of the Dragonlink receivers I can buy three or four online receivers for the same price. And the same goes for the module that costs alone $240. The next downside on Dragonlink is, at f as far as I know, it only has eight channels and it uses the PPM protocol to communicate with the flight controller and that's actually not even supported anymore by INAF. So something that I cannot use at all anymore. Yeah, that's basically all from my side. Uh, these are my reasons why I use R9. So what about you? What R ceiling do you use and why do you use this specifically? Just po put it in the comments. I'm really interested to see what everything else uh, has to say about that. And if you like that video, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't have already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.